Hello and welcome to another Passive Life SEV news update. A lot is happening right now in the SEV world and it will be a critical few months for all three major SEV companies. So let's get started. So first up is the Sono Sion. The first part of the Save Sion crowdfunding campaign has come to a close. It raised over 47 million euros, but that is, as unfortunately predicted, short of the 104 million they needed. So what's their next move? Well, they themselves predicted this eventuality and planned in an extension until the end of February, which they have now activated. During this time, they will try their best to raise the rest of the cash needed via whatever means they can, and they are talking to several big investors. If they can't meet this funding, then it's a bit unclear how they're going to proceed. In their presentation a few weeks back, it all sounded very final if they do fail to raise the money for the Sono Sion. In that case, the Sion project will probably fail and the company will be split into two. And the part of the company that makes PV conversion kits for existing vehicles will go on and the Sono Sion will unfortunately stop. But let's hope it doesn't come to that and that the backers do manage to save the project in time. The closer they do get to the 104 million through pure backer funding means that there's a lower risk for bigger investors to come in and save it. So this is now Sono's best bet. My feeling is that if they can get the backers to around 60 million euros, then the rest of the money, around 45 million euros, will be much easier to find from investment companies, especially if it's split between several different investment firms. This isn't pocket change to any investment company, but it's not a huge amount either, considering the potential rewards. Next up is Lightyear. Lightyear, in a very sudden and unexpected move, has seemingly put the Lightyear Zero, the exclusive €250,000 high-end SEV, on permanent hold or complete cancellation. That's a bit unclear at the moment. Declaring that they would instead focus on the mass market Lightyear 2. Now there is a lot of speculation, but not very much real information as to why this has happened now. Now the Lightyear Zero had apparently already entered production, but... The first Lightyear Zeros were supposed to be delivered by the end of 2022 according to their original time plan and after that they were supposed to be delivering around one Lightyear Zero per week. Obviously that never happened and they seem to have stumbled into some kind of problems along the line with this production. Everything's a bit quiet, we don't know really what has happened there. What's for certain is they have definitely hit some kind of blocker and that has caused a sudden change in direction within the company. My good feeling is that they've actually hit several smaller production problems with the Lightyear Zero and they've realised that their time plan is not viable and therefore not financially viable to continue with the Lightyear Zero at this point. This is just my speculation but if we look at the recent company activity there has been one big change and that is the appointment of Dr. Bernd Martens as COO. Martens has been part of various ICE manufacturers as well as being an advisor to Lightyear over the years and my guess is is that he came in and made this change a priority for the Lightyear 2. We don't have much information to go on so it's not really possible to say if this will be a good move or not in the long run because this is a major change. Now they do have over 20,000 fleet reservations for the Lightyear 2 which is obviously a big financial incentive and they've also got more than 40,000 people interested in reserving the Lightyear 2 alongside that. The Lightyear 2 will be the more popular commercial vehicle and so it does make sense from a business perspective to make this the priority. The flip side of this coin is that all the backers that backed the Lightyear Zero with €250,000 will now remove that funding and will flip over to the Lightyear 2 without any reservation funding, at the moment at least. Which means although they're going to lose this 235 million potential orders for the Lightyear Zero, which is a low production model, so this probably wouldn't have been very profitable for them in the first place, they are now flipping that and they will probably get somewhere similar to the Aptera in around 40,000 reservations for the Lightyear 2. At 40,000, which is their target price at the moment, that would equal about 1.6 billion euros in total potential. I think it's going to be more expensive than that when it first comes out. I'm thinking it's going to be closer to 50,000, but we'll have to wait and see. But the Lightyear 2 is a very interesting vehicle, and I think it's going to be commercially very successful when it eventually does launch. And lastly, we come to Aptera, and what a couple of weeks it has been for the company. Following on from the launch edition, when Aptera very controversially announced that there would be no DC fast charging, that was um, fun to watch. The second that they announced that there would be no DCFC for the Aptera launch edition, the text box exploded and most of the comments were simply, no DCFC, no deal. <laughs> And I felt very sorry for the CEOs of Aptera because they clearly misjudged this one. But Chris Anthony and Steve Farnborough, being the legends that they are, were very quick to react and put out the fire that they'd accidentally started. 
Not only did they do that, but they also went one better. The original DC fast charging target was 50 kilowatts, and they announced at least a 40 kilowatt version of the DC fast charging with the launch edition vehicles, but they also announced that it may be possible to hit up to 60 kilowatts when the validation is complete, which would be incredible. But shortly afterwards, they announced that they were working on a 100 kilowatt version, which is presumably for the bigger Apteras, the ones with the much larger batteries at a later date. So very interesting times in the SEV world. We'll see how this all develops now. Let's hope that Aptera can get the funding that they need in the next few months in order to start production quickly. If you are living in the States, then I would highly recommend that you switch your reservation to the launch edition vehicle, which will be available much faster than the other editions in the series. That's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of the recent announcements down below in the comments. Will Sono hit their funding target? Will Aptera hit their funding target? And what on earth is going on with the Lightyear company at the moment? Everything's a little bit up in the air and mysterious at the moment, but the next few months are going to be interesting to say the least. Remember, if you want to reserve an Aptera, please use the link down below. That will save you $30 off the reservation fee, which is totally refundable. Okay, that's it for this video. Have a good week and I will see you next time.